Hello everyone. Today's session is about using server agent to connect remote file server to center stack server. After you install the center stack server, sometimes you have local file server. So let's say you are a managed service provider and then you are managing some of your clients file, uh, file servers in the same data center. Or if you just install the center stack server next to the customer's file server in the same uh, building. So in that case, that's local connect. But sometimes you can cannot just connect to the server using the local SMB protocol. So you have to do it over the internet. So in that case, how are we going to connect the remote file server in? And we are going to be using the server agent to get it done. So to get started with the demonstration, we go ahead and create a new tenant. So a new tenant is mapped to, let's say, a company, uh, a corporation, a client of yours. So someone, um, you're helping them manage the file servers. And for this example, their file servers are away from your data center in their own building. So now we want to connect to their remote file server and leverage that file server to become a file sync and share solution and also help them maintain business continuity. So as you can see here, there is a config active directory. So we are not going to go this route because this active directory means the active directory has to be local, local to the center stack server. But in, in our case here, the customer's file server and the customer's active directory are away from us. So what we are going to do is we are going to set up a server agent remotely to help us connect the remote file server and remote active directory. So we are going to be setting up a go to meeting so then we can see what the remote server is doing. So I'm going to you know ask John to help us. So we are going to be switching over to John to set up the server agent. So John is showing the screen on the other side and he already logged into this Windows Server 2008 box. And then this Windows Server 2008 box is away from the center stack server. But this uh, Server 2008 box has uh, network shares on it. And then you like to expose this network share, not just in the local area network, but also expose that to um, uh, the wide area network, which is quote unquote cloud. Uh, to people, you know, using their, let's say, uh, iPhone, Android phone, and, you know, web browser, remote PCs without using a VPN, like the virtual private network. So as you can see here, John is downloading the server agent software. It's a very small piece of software to install. So once it's downloaded, you just double click on it to start the installation wizard. So the wizard is going to be um, very simple, like a few clicks later, it should be installed already and it's done. So the only thing is at the end, it requires a reboot. And after reboot, we're going to be losing John for the go to meeting session here. Um, but after John um, logs back in, he needs to log in to the server agent as the same tenant admin to connect the server agent to the same tenant. So he's going to do that part on a remote uh, site and we're not going to show that, but we will just say John has finished his work. So now we can continue our side of the work to help migrate a remote file server network share to the cloud. And after it's you know migrate to the cloud, you can see also the user identities are coming with the network share to the cloud. So now we logged in as ACME2, which is a new tenant we created. So remember, a new tenant represents a new company you are onboarding. So now we go to the team folder and then we create a new team folder. So we want to create a team folder and we will want to get that team folder from a remote server. So you can see here the remote server is showing up and then the remote server 
And the center stack in between is just internet, right? So the reason why the remote server can show up because the remote server has the uh, server agent software installed. And then also the server agent software already provide us the remote shares, the file server shares it detected uh, over the internet. So now it also detected the users that's assigned to the share. So if these users are from Active Directory, these users will show up from Active Directory. Otherwise, the users will be from the local machine, the local uh, computer. So now the team folder was imported. So we successfully converted a local area network network share to a wide area network um, you know, cloud team folder. Together with that, the two users, local users, Jerry and John, they were imported from the remote location into the center stack server. So now let's just go ahead and log in as John. So remember, John was a local user. He may be able to use the local file server when he is in the local area network uh, relative to the file server, or he's using VPN, virtual private network, to connect to it. But now he doesn't need to use VPN and then he can see the network, you know, the network share. But we, for this specific network share, I specifically didn't have John set up to the folder. So from a permission perspective, he was denied. So now let's see how we can correct this permission issue. So let's see if the permission was set up. In order to do so, let's log in as the tenant admin for ACME2. So let's log in and see uh, and check the folder's permission. So this is my share, and this my share has a like a drive icon, a PC icon. You know, you can see here the share was assigned to Jerry, but was never assigned to John. So let's add John in. So we add John in. So if when you set the share up on the NTFS to include John from the beginning, then the John will be there, you know, from the beginning. But for this session, we're going to kind of just, you know, get um, not have John from the initially and then add him back um, manually just to show you, you know, what can be done. So now John logs in and then he can see the two files that he can access originally when he was in the local area network in the company's building. But now he's outside of the company building. He just has a web browser. He can still access the same um, files and folders from over the cloud, right? So then you can see you as a service provider set up the center stack server and your customer has their server you know, remotely and then you use server agent to connect the folders in and connect the user identities in and then everything as it just works as it was before in the cloud. Thank you.